Here we go again. The very first product that we've got here is called Meat Claws. And the most embarrassing part of these videos is to admit what the failed video idea was. What was going on in your head? And honestly, I have no idea. I guess I just finished watching Wolverine. To be completely honest, I think the video idea for this gadget was kitchen utensils that never made it. So basically, you know, every kitchen gadget that exists has been invented by someone, you know, different types of people, but you know what I mean? From forks to knives. So the video idea for this was gadgets that really never made it mainstream. Like people don't actually use this in their houses and this, the Meat Claws is one of them. I've been on the Meat Claw website and this has basically got two different uses. One of them, if you ever cook a turkey, I think the best way to slice it is you use a fork and then you slice into it. But sometimes like the whole thing is like moving because obviously a fork doesn't have as much traction. So using this, this is supposed to make your job a lot easier, which I don't really know, but Ooh, we almost broke the plate. The grip is really good. So this is supposed to help you get a really perfect slice. And I'm usually really bad at carving something, but like <laughs> they might be onto something. Okay, turns out maybe my video idea was not as stupid and I should have just went ahead with it. We're even managing to not destroy too much of the skin. Look at that. It's like a slice of ham. Like it's so thin. I mean, that's pretty good. One of the uses is 100% approved and like it comes out pretty well and it also looks pretty cool. So this part right here, I'm really excited for this part because this is what I've actually been waiting to use this product for. I'm trying to remove this string from like roasting. Ouch! That's really hot. The main use for the meat claws, like the reason why this was actually invented is to shred meat that you've just cooked. So right here, I've got a piece of beef that I've slow cooked for four hours and then I finished it off in the oven to give it like a crusty texture. I don't know, this is my dinner. So using the meat claws, we should be able to shred this into like a million pieces. Oh my God. Oh, I mean, it's kind of working. It is shredded. This is gonna be a great dinner. You do need to work it a little bit, but like once you get the hang of it, look, this is literally like a million different strings of like meat. I think the main reason why I would buy this is because I actually think this looks ridiculous. If I'm hosting a barbecue, this is the mental image that I want you to go home with, unless you're vegetarian. If I was standing up, this would be a lot easier, but we've transformed that piece of meat into pulled beef in like a minute. I should have never put this in the trash. This video idea was actually good. This is surprisingly helpful. The next gadget that never really made it into one of my videos and understandably so is a curl a dog spiral dog slicer. <laughs> Instant spiral cuts for gourmet tasting hot dogs. I'm not gonna lie, when I think of gourmet, I don't think of a spiralized hot dog. It does look kind of incredible on the image, so it is entirely possible that this is great. So the idea for this video is so stupid that I'm even embarrassed that this was even a possible video on my channel. So the idea for this video was food gadgets for your barbecue. It doesn't even sound like anything that I want to watch and that's why I kind of gave up on it. All the barbecue and summer food products on Amazon were on like a 50% sale. So I went on it and I just bought a lot of stuff and then I realized no one cares because it was October by the time everything arrived to my house and no one cared anymore. It comes with two different sizes for the curl, a dog. Wow, I love that it's portable. Wow, that is a perfect measurement. This one's a little bit too big, I think, but let's try it. Why would you want to spiralize your hot dogs? And the reason why it's because it's fun. <laughs> it makes it crispier and I think it makes it easier to cook, but we'll see. I should have definitely washed this. We should probably put the, the little stick inside. I'm gonna do it with no stick. I think it'll be better. This is like a magic number. Three, two. So once we open this, Oh my God, what that, this doesn't look right. I don't know if you can see, but the sausage looks a bit like fluffy, like the cuts are a bit weird. It's like a human centipede, but made of sausages. Okay, so I'm gonna put the sausage in here and we're going to close it. It looks better though. Like this one looks kind of like it did on the image. Turns out size isn't everything. So I'm gonna plug this in. It is sizzling a little bit. They're not opening yet. Nobody, 11 from Stranger Things. The 
power of my mind. They're getting crispy on the outside, but they're not opening up like in the image. I think we have a fraud. That does look kind of appetizing, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it needs to be hotter. I think I'm a little bit disappointed with the results because basically the small sausage, even though the cuts were so clean, it didn't really open up. Like maybe if you move it like that. Nope. The big sausage worked a lot better. Like my goal was to recreate that mustard effect because I actually think that's really cool. So. Oh, that is not what the image looks like. Oh my god. Oh my god, no! What is wrong with this mustard? That looks so much better. This just looks like you literally cut it with a knife after, which I think the effect could be kind of similar. Now this one should be a pointless product video because I feel like this is one of those things that no one's gonna, no one's ever gonna use this. As you can see, I have about a billion of these yummy nummies, popping cooking, all of these like Japanese inspired like DIY miniature food kits. I used to be obsessed with these, I still am. The reason why I never filmed this video was because most of these expired in 2019, just so you have an idea. And also because the instructions are in Japanese, which makes this incredibly difficult like it's not impossible to actually figure it out this big one right here i was gonna save this for like a big video because i actually really wanted to do this but we're just gonna do it in this one it is a marshmallow treats maker and this is by yummy nummies which i would say is one of the most popular companies for these kinds of foods um i am very scared there's spiders in here because this is just it's sitting in my room full of you know in toy story where all the rejected toys go well basically that Okay, no spiders so far. Oh my god, this is, I can already tell this is gonna take so long. Also, these Rice Krispies have expired in um, a million years ago. Just to show you really quickly, this is what we're supposed to produce with this. I really enjoy this, but they take so long to prepare and I feel like it's relaxing, but I also have to be in the mood to do it. The only way I would enjoy this is if you guys let me post basically a two hour video of just me making it. I feel like doing it really quickly, it's, it's a lot. This one is actually surprisingly easy so far. Everything is labeled, everything is in English, which is usually where I struggle the most. Something is off already. Not easy. <laughs> Wait, why is he backwards? No! Oh no. Do you see? The little thing is backwards on here. I think this is broken. It's gonna be fine. It's just not your conventional electric mixer position. <laughs> and this is supposed to be the shape of our uh, Rice Krispie treats. I've read the instructions and I disagree, so I'm just gonna do my thing. We need the marshmallow mixture in the first place. Chocolate. Marshmallow. Maybe a little bit more. So we're supposed to add some water to this. That smells really expired. So I'm gonna add some water to it. Why is it not coming down? Okay, wait. Might be on something here. Yes. Oh no. Uh, we're gonna need a lot more of the powder. Okay, so that is our marshmallow mixture. I think it might be a little bit too runny, but we don't, I don't got time for this. Why do I feel like these Rice Krispies are literally covered in mold? Or spiders, or both. So the Rice Krispies go in there. Do we might not have enough space for this. It is working though. Maybe we should do this on here. Maybe this is like a hands-on kind of work. No, we're getting there for sure. So I'm gonna grab the Rice Krispies and we're gonna press it into the molds. Perfect. You can obviously clean it up, but um, we're not gonna do that. So that is the molds. This is supposed to go in the fridge for 10 minutes and hopefully we can get this out of here. Well, let's see. <laughs> I've got the image right here so you can see the expectation, which is most likely not gonna match. I just realized that I accidentally cleaning up binned the instructions. Not that I would follow them, but so this is supposed to be the little chocolate frosting. This is like not mixing with the water. This chocolate sauce actually smells incredible, so I'll give them that. The moment of truth, here's our um, Rice Krispie Treats. So these ones were the last ones I made. I didn't really press them, so hopefully we can manage to get them out. Okay, it's falling apart a little bit. Maybe the first ones that we press down, please work. 
Oh my god, that actually worked. That is pretty similar. I will admit that it was not relaxing. It was very chaotic, like, you know, most things on my channel, but it did come out perfectly. I would say it looks even better than the one on the image. Obviously, we don't have the instructions, so I'm just gonna assume that this is what it said. So I'm gonna dip it in here. Ooh, that bit, no, that did not work. Yes, that is better. Should have done that with the heart. And the last step is the sprinkles. Not that there's much to see to see, well, that was, that was quite a lot to see, actually. I swear, in real life, it looks even better than in the image. It actually looks really similar. Given the right circumstances, if I had the full day to do this, I think this would be a lot of fun. I'm thinking of doing a few of these on my TikTok, so I'm gonna put the link down below, so this might be up by now. We should do the noodles, that's gonna be fun. This next product didn't make it into one of my videos because I honestly think this is the most morbid product I've ever bought. This is, a barbecue branding iron. At a first look, looks kind of fun, right? But when you really think about it, what kind of psychopath wants to carve their name on the piece of meat that they're about to eat? I just, I just don't understand. Cooking steaks and burgers to perfection is an art. How you serve them is personal. So why not personalize that service by branding in your name Vegan people, do not fear. I'm testing this out in a vegan steak because even I know when it's too far. This is some criminal minds level of <laughs> product. So that's what it looks like. So, oh my God. The original video that I bought this for is also the barbecue video that I told you guys about. So I guess this is like, you know, the little end of the thing. And you can basically personalize with your name or any kind of message. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not someone who's like dying to have my name printed on a steak. Step one, insert the loop. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is insert this little thing on here to start our message. Wait, does it have to be backwards? Like, let me see. So if I wrote... I feel like that's the essential information that this... This is so confusing, I don't have the brain for this. My inspiration for the message was, I'm pretending to be the steak. Like, if I was the steak, this is what I have to say. So we put the other metal thing on the other side, and I feel like this whole thing is gonna fall apart. Oh my god, this is really scary. And now we have to tighten it up. How? If we spin it. At least it comes with all the tools necessary for this. And that is it. I'm not gonna lie, it's not very secure. It got oh! Oh my god, that literally took me like 30 minutes. I'm just gonna write stupid and brand myself on my forehead. Don't buy this. Like this is honestly, the little metal structures on the side to stop it from sliding, it does not work. Even though I already know that this is not worth your time, my time, anyone's time, we're still gonna go and carve our plant steak. I think ideally we'd probably make this outside in the barbecue, but we're not gonna do that. Like, how am I gonna flip this upside down? I have no idea, but it could be. So, one, two. That did not sound like sizzling. Um, this is not going according to plan. We're still trying here. This is truly what I'm doing with my weekend. Okay, one, two, and Interesting. The message you're supposed to be reading is, I'm vegan, but you can't really read the profanity, which is what really mattered here. I envision this as a statement and it's not making a statement. The really annoying thing is that these things don't really hold on really well. Look at this. Like if I just move it, it comes out, oof, that's hot. This is so dumb that I don't even wanna tell you what the video idea for this next one was. Here we've got a broyer glacé. It is basically an ice crusher or a picador de yellow for those of you who speak Japanese. The video idea for this one, it is the most stupid video idea I've ever had, which was, I don't even wanna say it, food products to improve your 
your picnics. <laughs> Sometimes when like summer comes around, I really wanna make like summer themed videos just to bring some of you guys some seasonal joy, like the same way you make Christmas videos. Last year, because of the lockdown, I felt very limited. Like I couldn't come up with a lot of video ideas. I couldn't go to restaurants, so I thought, what about picnics? Can I improve <laughs> my subscribers' picnics? I am so sorry. I feel like sometimes I come up with good video ideas and when I do, it's great, but the thing is, sometimes it's just, I, I gotta fail as well. My plan was to allow you guys to make a cocktail or like a summer crushed drink, maybe a slushy as well, without needing any electricity. Apparently, if you put ice in here, you can transform it into basically a slushy, which is the base for a lot of cocktails. I will give myself credit in one thing. I have never seen one of these. Like, I've literally never seen this, not on YouTube, not in anyone's house. So this is supposed to crush ice. Oh, this is not gonna crush anything. This is gonna crush my, my feelings. Ugh. Oh my God, this is so difficult. Oh my God. This is one of the most intense manual labor inducing gadgets that we've ever tried. It's not even that thin, which is probably fine actually. So imagine you're at a picnic and this is the amount of ice that you got. Literally barely enough for one drink. Like if you flatten this down, it's gonna be a great drink. I've worked hard to get it. So this is, oh, this is strawberry and watermelon. Okay, that is, that makes it kind of satisfying. It makes it all worth it. But if you're having a picnic for like two or three people, this could be kind of fun. If you're doing this for a group of people, this is like a lot of work, but cheers. This next one was also part of my picnic video. So as you can see, I really, I was really strong on this idea. I got this Instagram ad and it was a picture, like a video of two bottles of beer. And then they use these metal sticks. They remove the caps from the beer. They put the metal sticks inside the beer and he literally, like, the bottle went frozen. It was like magic. Went literally icy in like three seconds, which excited, but a little bit suspicious. But this is called a beer chilling stick. And it's actually, there's nothing on the inside, but I can show you if you're interested. It's been in the freezer since yesterday because I really wanna make sure that these things actually, like, we give them time to actually work. So these are like uh, pretty much like room temperature, maybe slightly cooler than room temperature. So, oh, these are, these are really, really cold. I feel like we shouldn't waste too much time, but this is so cold. Do you see like how frozen that looks? Once we put this in the bottle, this is supposed to go all icy. Okay, I didn't think about that. <laughs> is it going icy? Oh my God, I'm gonna freeze my finger trying to make this work. It really isn't <laughs> frozen. Like, let me see if this is cold at all. Wait, the stick, this is not even cold anymore. It warmed up so quickly. This is not even, this is not even room temperature. I would even classify this as warm. I will tell the manufacturers of this where I would put this stick. My new tradition for this year is no outros, but I do wanna say that I am going to be giving a try those miniature Japanese foods. I'm gonna give it a try on my TikTok. So I guess that's about it. And I will see you guys on my next video.